What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second hour of the Live with Rick show. Appreciate you calling in. 269-441-9595. If you have a thought about what we're talking about, Love to hear from you. You can also email me at rank, R-E-N-K, at townsquaremedia.com. Uh, something is, you know what? Hold on. Was that it? We're good. All right, sorry. Did I block it off? I think it's your fault. Uh, I think he thinks <laughs> I was just getting some help. I just look up at my call screening uh, uh computer screen and every line was blocked so i was like did i screw that up and luckily a uh, gentleman in here who's helping me out uh, was able to figure it out so if you do want to call in it's not blocked any longer 269-441-9595 or you can email me at rank r-e-n-k at townsquaremedia.com in that first hour we talked about as i always like to do many michigan issues the biggest issue is the breaking news last night that uh, i am proud to say i was able to break before anybody else out there of a new Veteran Administration's report that's recommending the closure of the Battle Creek Veteran Administration's Medical Center. All the links are there to the entire report about all of the country. And then what they call Regional Section 10, which Michigan or the Lower Peninsula is part, certainly the southern part of Michigan is part of it which includes Battle Creek. So you can check out that piece I wrote at WBCKFM.com or one of the affiliates you're listening to me on. Uh, and it gives you really what you need to know, the meat of it. If you go 50 pages into it, I did all that for you and was able to uh, tell you exactly what page to go to and you have the links there to check it out. I just found funny that they wrote under the section heading Modernize and Realign the Battle Creek VAMC by... Closing the Battle Creek VAMC. Only in government would that get through, I think. I thought it was interesting. And what are they going to do? They're going to uh, create or enlarge the one in Wyoming, Grand Rapids. But they also talk in another section, and I give it to you, tell you what page to go to, and I give you the... A necessary text that says, quote, establishing a new MSCBOC in the vicinity of Kalamazoo, Michigan, with the proposed closure of the Battle Creek VAMC, outpatient services will be relocated to a new MSCBOC in the vicinity of Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kalamazoo County. This will expand access to primary care, outpatient mental health, outpatient specialty care, and urgent care services for veterans in the most sustainable location in the Kalamazoo area. We'll see. It's just a recommendation. All these fights will start occurring between all the congressmen and women, as well as the men and women senators from all these states, trying to keep their section or their building or their medical center open. 269-441-9595, if you have a thought. I'm being told by one of you that there's 17 medical centers will close and more than 30 will be built or replaced under the plan. Someone sent that to me. So, And I didn't know that would happen. But again, I wouldn't panic yet. Let's see what's happening. I've asked Congressman Heisinga to come on air uh, to discuss if he wins the Republican primary for the 4th District, which 
Battle Creek is now in. And he wins the general, uh, what will, will he do? How does he see that fight uh, for keeping it open, shutting someone else's place up? I do think that there is a point that the report made about the age of the building and the cost of upkeeping such an old building, and it doesn't... Well, instead of me making that, uh, saying that, I should just tell you, it says the infrastructure does not meet current design standards 56 for modern health care and historic buildings make it costly to maintain. That's probably got a big X on their back uh, because of that. I also went into a second piece I wrote. Flint, Michigan election official charged with ballot tempering, tampering and misconduct in a 2020 election in which she was in the election. Detroit Free Press, believe it or not, reported on it. And yes, the Michigan Attorney General's office did bring charges of misconduct in office and ballot tampering. Apparently, she purposely, allegedly, purposely broke a seal on a ballot container, quote, end quote, which then, according to Michigan law, in a recount, if it was to occur, those ballots could not be counted. I don't know any more than that if she was trying to help her own election or if she was trying to help Democrats in general via Trump. I would think Flint is going to go pretty far uh, for Biden and all this mess that they brought us with their vote. So I would find that suspect. But it's just something that is occurring. What will the mainstream media say about it? They'll just say that, well, we're now, we meant widespread fraud. I saw a change and I, I yesterday is when I started researching for this piece is when I saw it, a change from no evidence of election fraud to then no evidence of widespread election fraud because more evidence of election fraud was rearing its ugly head. And it happens every election. It just matters how much. Why did the Detroit Free Press report on someone from their own party? Same thing with the Michigan Attorney General's office led by Democrats. Why? Did they charge? Well, possibly it could have to do with wanting to control the message as well as, you know, you could sit there and say, look, we're reporting or we're charging someone from our own party because we care about election integrity. But also, why not just small, throw a small fish under the bus as opposed to the big fish, which will still be left in the game? And then I, I'm, I'm sorry, the end of that last hour was ugly. What happens is I get into these pieces or I get into discussing or trying to uh, think of the best way to bring it to you. And then I look at my clock and I'm like, wow, got to go. So I apologize for that. And it all had to do with a union, the Technical Professional and Office Workers Association of Michigan is bringing a court to ca a case to court because they don't want to represent someone at the company who was a union member but then chose the right to work so they're not paying dues, they shouldn't have to represent. And I would completely agree with them. I honestly would. And by the way, for the millionth time, I could care less about private unions. Because I don't, and I have a deep disgust for public unions and what they do to our country and the taxpayer, people then sit there, even people who agree with me many times, think I have this hatred of private unions. I don't. I don't care what happens in the private industry. As long as the government's not forcing it and these other people, whoever's doing whatever, it's all up and up and all legal, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter how many times over the years I say that. That's the one problem that the, uh, the unions have a very thin skin. If you don't say anything but glowing things about them, they think you hate them. I'm actually agreeing with them. They shouldn't have to represent someone who is not paying union dues. In fact, this guy in, even wasn't asking for them to represent him. The problem is, they ask for exclusivity when it comes to representing workers at that company if a union is voted in. And in exchange, the company said, well, you have to then represent everybody. And they didn't think that right to work would ever come, as I assume the argument. 
So they said, sure, we just don't want competition. Now, on the funny part of it is in a brief that they filed last month, they said having to represent an employee who chooses not to pay union dues is, quote, tantamount to government forcing the union into involuntary servitude, end quote. Not realizing that the government was forcing people into involuntary servitude to the unions at those companies because you had to pay them to work there. That's the hypocrisy I like pointing out. Unions were forcing people into involuntary servitude. Well, governments through the unions were forcing them to do it. So, Again, they, they want protection from involuntary servitude on one side, and then they want to force involuntary servitude on this side. And what about prevailing wage? You're forcing all of us taxpayers to pay, and I think the Mackinac Center for Public Policy in the past has said 200 and something million extra dollars a year in taxpayer funds on all these public works projects because of prevailing wage. Now, let's get into this. This guy, who they're, they don't want to represent, resigned his union membership in 2017. But when he tried to file a former grievance complaint on his own behalf over a 2018 employer reprimand, he was blocked from doing so due to his being covered by grievance procedures in the union contract. So he wasn't asking... I guess the business said, well, you got to go and get represented by that person or those that group because we have a deal with them. The contract presumes the union will represent all employees in such manners. But when this employee approached a union official about this, the union demanded payment to do so. Now, local policy analyst at the Mackinac Center for Public Policy, Steve Diley, explained it this way. The union voluntarily sought out the role of being the exclusive representative for every employee in the workplace. But now it only wants to serve those who choose to pay dues. When negotiating this contract, union officials understood it would obligate them to represent all members of the bargaining unit fa family or fairly, even if they are not members. End quote. 269-441-9595. You listen live with Rank. We'll be right back after this. You're listening to the Live with the Rank Show. Uh, thank you very much for that. I talking about unions. I was sent this yesterday from someone who works in the long-term care industry, nursing home. And it came from McKnight's Long-Term Care News. And they're concerned about this PRO Act. I don't know if you've heard about it. I believe I spoke about it in the past. But the PRO Act, it appears, it looks to be making pretty much all right-to-work laws uh, illegal. So... That's something that the Democrat Party from the national level is trying to do. Now, the Labor, Relation, Labor Relations Act ensures workers are legally entitled to form unions. And if workers are being prevented from doing a protected activity, maybe that's what needs to be better enforcement of an existing law is what this guy was talking about. So keep an eye on this thing called the PRO Act. What else do we have to go on these days? Oh, I found this interesting because many of you know the new excuse from the Biden administration and the Democrat Party and all their minions in the media is that inflation and the gas prices and all of that is not biden or the democrats fault it's not the fact that economists told him if you spend 1.9 trillion last march because trump 
and the Democrats and the Republicans in Congress spent enough money already on COVID. If you spend this, you're going to cause a bad bout of inflation. He was warned about that. And I believe warned from even his own economist. By his, I mean in that party. Then he turned around and the Democrats passed with not a single Republican vote. So none of this inflation could be could be thrown on their shoulder, or certainly not much of it. It passed on a party line vote, and Biden signed that $1.9 trillion. That was the straw that broke the debt back, or the inflation dam. That was the, the spike into the dam that let open all of the increases, or most of the increases in what we're seeing today with inflation. So the question is, people are asking, are people believing Biden? Now, it's kind of early, I think, to be looking at that uh, question because they, they just started this tactic, what, a week ago or less? It all started, they say, when Biden responded to a reporter asking about this record gas prices. And he said, Quote, I can't do much about it. Russia is responsible, end quote. And as I said yesterday, I know politicians will always do what they can to deflect blame, which is odd in a way because I think they've learned and they should have learned through the Trump administration that we all know everybody's human. We all know that everybody makes mistakes. The problem is if you're unwilling to admit your mistakes, then you're unwilling to fix it. And I said that yesterday, and I mean that today. This is not a pounding on them for trying to get out of all the bad ills they brought to our country and now the world with Ukraine and Russia. Oh, you wonder why I just said, and now the world with Ukraine and Russia? What does he have to do about that? Bill Maher, Bill Maher, a liberal comedian slash political pundit on HBO said this on Friday. Okay, but if Putin thought Trump was really that supportive of him, why didn't he invade when Trump was in office? It's at least worth asking that question if you're not locked into one intransigent thought. That's why I said, and the world. I've been asking that question for a while, haven't I? And the fact that if any of that Russia baloney was true, he would have done it under Trump. If all of us saying what's happening with Russia paying Biden off through his son Hunter, I know one instance when he was given millions of dollars, his son Hunter, from the mayor of Moscow, close associate, obviously, of Putin. So during uh, Trump's administration, when he was supposed to be in cahoots with them, Biden, excuse me, uh, Putin didn't invade. As soon as Biden's elected, months later, he's starting amassing troops and equipment on the border of Ukraine. Is Biden... A puppet of Putin? He's certainly not doing all he could do to stop Putin from what he's doing. Couldn't stop him before. Could have anybody have stopped him? I don't know. Certainly if Trump was in office, they would have said he's not stopping him and hit him up for that. So I think it's fair to say what's going on from a world level. All those people voted Biden in. Are they partly responsible? Uh, I, I don't know. Again, Bill Maher, a liberal, said this. Okay, but if Putin thought Trump was really that supportive of him, why didn't he invade when Trump was in office? It's at least worth asking that question if you're not locked into one intransigent thought. And it's worth asking the question then, Bill, is Biden supportive of Putin? Secretly, not with his words in his mouth. Because why is he 
doing it under Biden. In an ABC News poll conducted over the weekend, 70% of Americans disapprove of Biden's handling of the gas prices. So right now, they're not believing it. Of course, the hardcore 10, 15, 20%, they'll believe it. American families are now spending about 6% of their entire income on gasoline and alone. It says here, American uh, Biden surrendered American energy independence, and a lot of us want him to get it back. In a CBS poll from just last week, 63% of Americans want Biden to increase oil and gas production within the United States, including a majority of Republicans, independents, and Democrats. Now, what are we being told? We are being told that he is doing everything he can to lower the gas. No, he's not. Open up the spigots. Give the American oil companies whatever they need, whatever assurance, put it in a law that you're not going to turn around and uh, uh, reverse everything in six months from now. And then you're doing everything you can. But 63% of Americans want him to increase oil and gas production right here in the United States. And that is a majority of Republicans, independents, and Democrats, according to a CBS poll, one of their polls. One third want to see Biden continue to beg. Well, this is kind of opinionated to beg for more oil from the Middle East or South America. How, how can you beg for more oil when the head of the Emirates, UAB, United Emirates, I'm sorry, and Saudi Arabia won't take his phone call to beg for it? A Harris X poll conducted in late February found that a mass of 69% of Americans want the Biden administration to, quote, ease its focus, end quote, on climate and get to work developing energy in the United States. Now, that doesn't surprise me because it's never in a top 10 issue of most of America, the green issue. Lines are open, 269-441-9595. You're listening to Live with Rank, and we'll be right back after this. To realize- You're listening to Live with Rank, so <laughs> that song goes so perfect with the fact that Biden's trying to call the head of the UAE and the Saudi Arabia, and they won't take his phone call. Now, perhaps they're not taking his phone call uh, due, due to the fact that Uh, Last time they tried calling him, they got this when Biden picked up the phone. Oh, no, here it is. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color for the town? Hello? Hello? Maybe after that they said, "Ah, I'm I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go that route. 269-441-9595. Two six nine four four one nine five nine five. You ever thought about what we're talking about today? Got to have some fun sometimes. We got to laugh at this once in a while, right? Let's go to Bellevue, Michigan, and Mike. Mike wanted to discuss this issue concerning the goes out on 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 the uh, tour, so to speak, and he sits there and he says, "Well, I I can't take any questions, or I don't know if I should answer this because." I could get in trouble. Right, right. It's very odd for a person. Where have you ever seen a president, I don't recall in my lifetime, uh, ever seeing a president respond that way to any question? What I think, Linda, is that he is, um, as, as all the smart people told everybody, he is struggling with age. And I hope I don't get there. Just the other day, Sunday, I was talking about my brother's son, and I completely forgot his name. I could not remember it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, and I'm a lot younger than Biden. So I hope I'm not going down that road. So I'm not mocking him, but he has serious, serious uh, aging problems, and that's what those who voted for him gave us, and it's, it's a shame. It's a shame that they did so. So, All right, Linda? Yeah, well, uh, I don't know what happened. I did not hear what the other caller said. He just said, well, he's like, hi, I'm in the- He's on right now, so we'll go to there. All right? Thanks a lot for calling in. Uh, calling. Appreciate that. Let's now see. Uh, Michael, you back on? I am, sir. How are you? Uh, well, that was it were, uh, great. Thank you. I, it was weird. You got to say a few words, syllables, and then you went uh, dead. I assume it was a uh, cell <laughs> or something. 
Well, well, I started with uh, Saudi Arabia may not be taking calls, but you are, and I certainly appreciate it. Well, yeah, my, my <laughs> and maybe that's why they cut off your phone, because they somehow hacked into, or the uh, CIA is hacked into our uh, call screening <laughs> process and knew what you were going to talk about and didn't appreciate my ELO song. If you just pick up that telephone. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, the other day I was watching, uh, I think it was the officer Tatum on YouTube because I don't, I, I prefer not to give any business or airtime to some of these liberal, um, news channels, but, um, they had a clip from Trevor Noah, um, with a daily show there from, from Comedy Central. Yeah, and who, who had a clip? Who had the clip of Trevor Noah? Uh, I, I think the officer Tatum. Yeah, I don't who, know. Who, uh, uh, he's a he's a black law enforcement conservative law enforcement officer oh, I see. who has a, a really big following on Facebook on gotcha. YouTube. Gotcha, gotcha. He's his own YouTube so, um, channel. Okay, go ahead. Yep, yep. And he he had a clip from from the Trevor Noah show there, and uh, for as uh, you know as liberal as Trevor Noah is, I think they've come to a point now where if they don't try to cover the news somewhat accurately, they just look ridiculous, almost like the Jesse Smollett case. And uh, they had a clip on there, and he said, you can say what you want about Trump. You know, and he obviously does not like him. He said, but if these were foreign leaders and dignitaries not answering the or Trump was calling some of these foreign leaders, you can bet your butt they would answer the phone. And, you know, he kind of went off on a diatribe, and maybe it was because Trump was erratic or they didn't know what he could do. He said, but regardless... When he called, they picked up the phone because they knew there was consequences for not doing it. And he said, I would imagine right now that as sad as it is, Joe Biden is wishing that he could kind of have Trump step in as a wild card president in these moments because he can obviously not handle the, you know, the pressures or the, the delicate nature of dealing with other world leaders. And coming off of a show like The Daily Show with, with Trevor Noah, I thought that that was pretty telling some of these far left liberals now, right now are having no. Yeah, and I wonder why. Cause Bill Maher has done it. Turban. Now, Bill Maher, right after he said that, he went into ripping into uh, Trump. But uh, it's almost like it's so bad they feel they have to say it to have some credibility. Maybe I'm not sure. You know what I heard last night? I heard a story last night. I can't remember who was telling it. Who uh, you remember that whole thing when? Trump and his administration were dealing with the uh, Taliban. I think it must have been in Afghanistan coming to some degree mm -hmm. agreement. I heard last night someone saying that, and they said they had uh, they had had uh, several sources that have confirmed it. That when Trump was talking to whoever was leading the Taliban, and obviously they weren't in the same room. It was via either either video conference or phone. Uh, they said that Trump said to them, if you break any of these, I will obliterate you. and I your, will wipe you off the map. Yeah, and, and nation or whatever. Yes. And then they said this. So we knew that. Then they said this. He then told him exactly where he was at the moment that guy, whoever, wherever that guy was, he told him where he was. <laughs> so he knew it from our, I assume, CIA, uh, where he was. And if it was correct, that's certainly going to scare someone. And that's what everybody was saying. It's good for people to not know uh, 15 moves ahead. With the, many politicians, you know every move they're going to make uh, going ahead. And Absolutely. When, and, when and, you, and when you have someone like uh, Putin who is... Um, you know he's he, he's a he's a thug. As Steve Harrigan said, I'm, I got to play a, a an interesting audio clip of Fox's reporter Steve Harrigan saying he's not a president; he's a thug. He's exactly right, and these guys are treating him like he is uh, not a thug, like he is truly a president, and he is reasonable. And he'll be, you know he'll be uh, diplomatic about these things. These people aren't diplomats. He's not a diplomat. No, when Putin. you. When you're dealing with people that only speak violence, sometimes the only language that they recognize is violence. And that goes for the Taliban and for ISIS and Putin. You know, I mean, Trump might have not said anything like that on air, but I can promise you that if we were in this situation that behind closed doors or on a private call, he would tell him, look. You realize I could send a warhead through your bedroom window. Right, right. And maybe so. So let me ask you this, Michael, before we run out of time. Uh, where are you on what we should do? I mean, because you know, to give credit where credit's due, the Biden administration is doing a lot of things that, you know, they should be doing. Uh, I, I, yep. Do you think 
because more and more people want to get into World War Three on this. And, and well, I, I, I you, certainly don't want to get into World War Three. But what I can tell you is watching the quagmire that he has going on in Ukraine, the length of time that it has fought, that it has took to get as far as he can fighting against a third rate army and civilians. I think that maybe not publicly, but like I said, on a closed line, it might be worth telling him, look, you know, we don't want World War III and neither do you, but you, you, you've shown to us that your army isn't as strong as we thought, that it's outdated, and as much as we don't want that war with you, you don't want it with NATO. Do you know what I read this morning? You may find this interesting. I read this morning, and I can't remember where, but it was a, a reputable uh, news organization. Well, Anyway, it was a news organ. It was a media organization. Is that uh, ten to fourteen days? That's what they believe. Uh, the military experts believe that if the Ukrainians can hold out for ten to fourteen days, that that's the turning point uh, where the attrition on the side of the Russians from logistics, from supply chains, from everything, from morale will flip. And then the positive will uh, movement will go to the Ukrainians. And maybe that's why you see the indiscriminate just flattening of cities by Biden. Uh, and and we'll I, see what happens. I, yeah, I think I, I think that you're right, to be honest. I mean, I you know, I, I try to stay up to date on this stuff. But I guess even I was wrong because, you know, I know that America has a couple thousand fighter jets at our disposal. And my first thought when they were like 29 MiG-29s would make all the difference in the world. And I thought, wow, 30 fighter jets would make the difference in a war against Russia. They are not nearly as armed as I thought they were. But, but are, you're not yeah. advocating for us getting directly involved in them, are you? Uh, no, I don't think that we need to do that, but I do think that as long, you know, I wouldn't be scared to send them more javelins, more stinger missiles. I wouldn't be scared to put something on the table and negotiate it where they could go to the Ramstein Air Force Base or through Poland, pick up that stuff. And if he decides that that's a violation, you know, of, of, of our agreement with them and NATO, then so be it. But he's going to have to be the one to push the issue. And I just don't think his army has the strength to do it. All right. Thanks, Mike, for calling in. I appreciate that very much. Much two six nine four four one nine five nine five. You listen to live with rank. Your guys thoughts. We're still there's a lot of people out there. I saw a Republican congresswoman elected in, in Florida from Florida. Salazar, I think her name was. She's calling for us to getting an armed engagement with the Russians via the no fly zone. You know, that's going to happen. And then when they asked her, are you ready for World War three? She couldn't answer the question again. Think with your mind, not your heart. My heart, my heart wants to level the same amount of cities that Biden, excuse me, Putin is leveling in Ukraine to level their cities in 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 Moscow, in Russia. My heart is telling me to do a lot more. My mind is saying, you do that, there are going to be many dead Americans. And are you guys? Well, I'm going to say this. Are those of you who have family in the military, where are you on that? 269-441-9595. You listen to Live with Rank. We'll be right back after this. Listening to the Live with Rank show. Appreciate that. You know, I knew I had some good news that I wanted to start the show off with earlier today. And I was scrambling at the end to try to find it or right before the show started. It's let let's shelf this it could be good news they say american astronaut mark von de hey will travel back to earth with the two russians in late march after his 355 days in space now i say let's let's shelve that because it's according to the ap now i want to hear from the russians i could care less what our nasa has to say when it comes to will he come back on the Russian uh, ship. And I can especially care even worse, less, I should say, by the AP, because they, they're not into uh, always promoting the truth. They're into agenda business of the left. And, you know, once you do that, uh, they just ruined it all. I used to trust the AP and Reuters until the Trump administration and all the fake news and lies and uh, half truths they put out there. I don't believe a darn thing they say. 
I just think it's interesting that uh, they're they're making that statement with no comment from Russia. So how do you know? Oh, because NASA told us they are. Well, how do they know? Well, because the Russians told them. All right, go talk to the Russians and get a quote from them. But let's hope so. Also, yesterday, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan had a seven-hour meeting with his Chinese counterpart. And we are told he laid down the line. Now, we know what laying down the line is with these people. Remember the red line for Obama? And then they passed it, and then he said, and then he withdrew it again. Well, you you better not go past this one then. So I have no idea. I have no idea. Now, I did see where there was a person who uh, had access to someone who used to be in this Jake Sullivan's role. I think he's the DNI, Director of National... Well, no. Uh, anyway, and they said, and they were asked, have you ever had a seven-hour meeting with someone? He goes, no. I had a four-hour meeting with someone, and that went real bad. So I suspect this one's even worse. Now, I had told you I read somewhere that this morning, 10 to 14 days, they think may be a turning point if Ukraine can hold out that long for various reasons, supply chain, logistics, morale, what have you, that, and what's happening in Russia, I should say, from an economic standpoint, uh, that the tide may turn in the, in the, in the, uh, to the way of the Ukrainians. But by that time, all their cities will be leveled, probably, or most of their cities. Something else is going on. Apparently, Russia owes $150 billion in world debt. And they have to come up with $117 million in interest by tomorrow. And if they don't, what's going to happen? Well, Russia responded and says, we're going to pay it, but we're going to pay it in rubles. Well, they're supposed to pay in dollars. So, as I said, there are some things that the Biden administration are doing that I certainly agree with. I think they could be doing more, especially in the oil side. We'll talk about that more coming up after this top of the hour break. You're listening to me, Rank, on the Live with Rank Show. Appreciate that. 269-441-9595. Is he when you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.